All right, listen up. This morning, a massive development on the AI front. Elon Musk and other major tech leaders calling for a pause on giant artificial intelligence ex experiments. In an open letter, they warned this. AI systems with human competitive intelligence can, po can pose profound risk to society and should be planned for and managed with commensurate care. Unfortunately, this level of planning and management is not happening. Society has hit, has hit pause on other technologies with potentially catastrophic effects. Therefore, we call on all AI labs to immediately pause for at least six months the training of AI systems. Fox News contributed. Douglas Murray joins us now. Douglas, he wants regulations and parameters. Obviously, AI needs a certain level of expertise to do that. Your reaction to these thousand experts headed by Elon Musk and this letter that's now out there? It's an extraordinary letter, I have to say. Uh, pretty much unprecedented. I mean, these are people at the absolute forefront of the technology we're talking about who are expressing deep concern. I mean, to call for a six-month moratorium, basically, on further advancements in the area suggests that they're, 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 they're deeply worried about this. So it seems like every day now there is a groundbreaking news story in the world of artificial intelligence and yesterday was no different. Less than 24 hours ago Elon Musk along with many other prominent experts of AI development such as an IBM chief scientist Stability AI CEO Imad Mostak and tech ethicist Tristan Harris and even Andrew Yang who you may know from the 2020 presidential race. These men and over a thousand others, including a bunch of DeepMind employees, all signed a letter from the Future of Life Institute, which is a nonprofit partially funded by Elon Musk himself. This letter is a fascinating discussion on the existential risks posed by the current artificial intelligence arms race and calls for a six-month pause on the development of models more complex than OpenAI's GPT-4. Today, we're going to read through and break down this letter to discover why exactly all of these experts of their field are concerned about the growing risk of uncontrolled AI, and why we, perhaps, should be worried too. But before we dive in, welcome to my channel, TFC Tech, where we discuss fascinating topics surrounding science and technology. If you're not subbed yet, hit that subscribe button as well as the like button, and let's get started. Pause Giant AI Experiments, an open letter. We call on all AI labs to immediately pause for at least six months the training of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4. AI systems with human competitive intelligence can pose profound risks to society and humanity, as shown by extensive research and acknowledged by top AI labs. As stated in the widely endorsed Asilomar AI principles, advanced AI could represent a profound change in the history of life on Earth and should be planned for and managed with commensurate care and resources. Unfortunately, this level of planning and management is not happening, even though recent months have seen AI labs locked in and out of a control race to develop and deploy even more powerful digital minds that no one, not even their creators, can understand, predict, or reliably control. So in that first paragraph, they highlight the fact that proper planning and management of these AI systems isn't happening. And that can especially be seen through Microsoft recently firing their entire AI ethics team. While they do still have an office for responsible AI, employees at Microsoft say that the ethics team and society played a critical role in ensuring that the company's responsible AI principles are actually reflected in the design of the products they ship. From the sound of it, these pressures to cut back on expenses that may or may not be critically important to the long-term safety of Microsoft's AI products is coming from the top down. In a meeting with the team following the reorganization, John Montgomery, the corporate vice president of AI, told employees that company leaders had instructed them to move swiftly. Quote, the pressures from the CTO Kevin Scott and CEO Satya Nadella is very, very high to take these most recent open AI models and the ones that come after them and move them into customers' hands at a very high speed. This particularly worries me, considering that OpenAI CEO Sam Altman typically has a more cautious approach with his models, and it's sad to see corporate greed bleeding into and taking over the release of potentially dangerous systems that we don't fully understand. But I digress, let's get back to the letter. Contemporary AI systems are now becoming human competitive at general tasks. And we must ask ourselves, should we let machines flood our information channels with propaganda and untruth? Should we automate away all the jobs, including the fulfilling ones? Should we develop non-human minds that might eventually outnumber, outsmart, obsolete, and replace us? Should we risk loss of control of our civilization? 
These are some extremely heavy hitting questions that these experts are asking here. Now you may think that it's a bit of a stretch to be considering these things when all we have right now is a useful chatbot that can make our creative tasks a bit easier. But the truth is that these questions are being asked by people who are probably smarter than me and you, and who are at the forefront of the development of this technology. The letter goes on to say that such decisions must not be delegated to unelected tech leaders. Powerful AI systems should be developed only once we are confident that their effects will be positive and that the risks will be manageable. This confidence must be well justified and increased with the magnitude of a system's potential effects. OpenAI's recent statement regarding artificial general intelligence states that at some point it may be important to get independent review before starting to train future systems and for the most advanced efforts to agree to limit the rate of growth of compute used for creating new models. We agree, and that point is now. So what do they mean by all of that? Well, I'm going to skip a little bit and go to a later paragraph which helps provide context for all of what they just said. They say that AI research and development should be refocused on making today's powerful state-of-the-art systems more accurate, safe, interpretable, transparent, robust, aligned, trustworthy, and loyal. In parallel, AI developers must work with policymakers to dramatically accelerate development of robust AI governance systems. These should, at a minimum, include new and capable regulatory authorities dedicated to AI oversight and tracking of highly capable AI systems, and large pools of computational capability, provenance and watermarking systems to help distinguish real from synthetic and to track model leaks, a robust auditing and certification ecosystem, liability for AI-caused harm, robust public funding for technical AI safety research, and well-resourced institutions for coping with the dramatic economic and political disruptions, especially to democracy, that AI will cause. So I don't know about you, but when I read through that paragraph, my jaw was on the floor. I hadn't even considered the possibility of some of those dangers laid out there. One that especially stood out to me was the AI watermarking for synthetic images. Just last week, a picture of the Pope in a white puffer jacket went viral on the internet as people were blown away with the fact that the image was fake and indeed created by Midjourney V5. As these systems get better and better, we have to establish some way to effectively distinguish what's real and what isn't, especially with regards to things like news stories and historical events. Otherwise, like mentioned earlier in the letter, we run the risk of AI creating a storm of misinformation for any subject. So due to all of those risks, they call for AI labs to immediately pause for at least six months the training of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4. They say the pause should be public and verifiable and include all key actors, and that if a pause cannot be enacted quickly, that governments should step in and institute a moratorium. And honestly, I have to agree with them. I'm a tech nerd, as you can see by my YouTube channel, and I love all of the use factors and creative tools that today's AI systems provide but I can absolutely see the writing on the wall, which I explained in my last video. And like these experts are saying, I believe that the danger is absolutely present and should be mitigated, whether by the government or by the companies themselves. Sadly, like we see with Microsoft, I don't believe that the companies themselves will institute this moratorium, as this is essentially a new untapped market that can provide an opportunity in the trillions of dollars. So I think that while this letter is extremely insightful and provides a great warning to those of us concerned by the ever-growing AI arms race, I think that ultimately it won't amount to much of a change. There is simply too much money to be made and too much fame to be gained to pump the brakes on AI development. So my suggestion to all of us is to learn what we can and hitch a ride on this exponential ramp up of technology. I'll end this video with the reading of the final paragraph of the letter, which provides a much needed glimmer of hope amidst all the dangers and warnings from before. The final paragraph reads, Humanity can enjoy a flourishing future with AI. Having succeeded in creating powerful AI systems, we can now enjoy an AI summer in which we reap the rewards, engineer these systems for the clear benefit of all, and give society a chance to adapt. Society has hit the pause on other technologies with potentially catastrophic events on society before, and we can do so here. Let's enjoy a long AI summer, not rush unprepared into a fall. The, the, the level of the increase in quality of life that AI can deliver is extraordinary. We can make the world amazing and we can make people's lives amazing. We can cure diseases, we can increase material wealth, we can like help people be happier, more fulfilled, all of these sorts of things. 